So boys, 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 welcome back. Everybody for jump in. Appreciate all the support on the Rams video. I think of me currently recording this, I think it's at like 200 views in like 18 hours or some shit. So appreciate all the support in that. That's been a lot of fun. Like I said, people were asking how long are those going to come out. I'm probably also people were asking, can I do shorter videos and then we could have videos every day. Look, if that's something you want to do instead of having like a longer video every other day, I can do shorter videos every day. It just means we're going to be playing one game every day. So with regards to the Rams thing, I'm probably going to do three Atlanta videos. A Rams video, three Atlanta videos, a Rams video. I do need a few days in between because we have to play a whole season with Rams and it, it takes a little while to get through a season. But with regards to the Atlanta save, things have been going very, very well. I've had a few wee niggles and a few injuries here and there, but touch wood, nothing crazy. So I'll jump over and I'll show you all the results and stuff first. So this is how the team is looking right now. Look, all in all, pretty well. Started off the season against Ampoli, beat them 2-0. Played Bologna, beat them 3-0, played solo, could be 2-1, still kind of tinkering to see who's playing where and like what positions suit everybody best. Then we went and played Roma, absolutely smashed them, fucking 5-3. Ederson has been so good for us. As you can see, 13 games, 5 goals, 1 assist and a 7.16 for the season. He is currently one to buy a lot of big clubs. Chelsea, Newcastle, Bayern, Inter and... um. Napoli so uh, trying to hold on to him is going to be difficult he is a player I do want to hold on to as long as possible because he's fucking fantastic still only 24 years old yeah he's one of our non-EU players but he's only 24 can play fantastic at both feet consistent enjoys the big games has a good mentality he's also anticipates the game mental stats are fucking absolutely fantastic he's currently playing kind of out of position at the minute the buddy seems to be enjoying it really really well but like I said for him and smashing and he got a hat trick against Roma then we played Slavia Prague our group in the Europa League so far, no, I mean, it's Union, Slava, and Toulouse games. I wouldn't really overly expect us to lose, but we played our first game, beat them 2-0, then we played Torino, drew with them one each, and then we had our first big game, I would say. I say Rome is a big game, but it enters one of the big boys, no, I mean, the ones that's always challenging for the title. Play them, beat them 2 each, Aston only did score an OG in the 95th minute, so we were uh, we were lucky to get ourselves a little goal, but it is what it is, and then Skamaka scored the goal for us. Then we played Florentina back in the league, Beat them 4-2. Then we jumped over back into Europe and we played Toulouse. We beat them 2-0. Honestly, this was a hard game. I'm not going to lie. It took us till about the eight, was it the 80th minute. Yeah, 80th minute and 83rd minute. I had to actually bring a few people on and move a few things around. Just like every goal we were hit, every shot we were hitting was hitting the post and hitting the keeper or we were just missing like open nets. And it was just like, I was like, oh God, we're about to get FM. But lucky enough, we didn't. And then we played um Sal Salarantana. <laughs> Beat them 3 0, and then Brazana beat them 2 0. Union beat them 2 0, and then we played Frasone, beat them 3 0. So, like I said, we've only really played Roma and Inter so far. I'd say Fiorentina is a good team, but they're not like Champions League pushing team, if you know what I mean. All in all, we've been doing very, very well. Scoring a lot of goals, not massively conceding a lot. Roma was about the only game where we really conceded like a large amount of goals. Inter acts back to concede against because their forward line of Taram, Saro Martinez, no, I mean, their team is very, very good. But in the league, fucking smashing it boys granted there's only 10 games gone so don't be getting too excited 10 played 1-7 drew 2 and the only game we've lost is against Sassuolo like we played Roma and Inter and the only game we've lost like you always get beat by the fucking random teams I don't know if it's because it's Sassuolo and busy that's who Skamaka used to play for and they were just like we'll just beat them but like I said only losing one game out of 10 so far, we're doing very, very well. We're only two points behind AC Milan, and like AC Milan have a fucking fantastic team. Like, look at Theo Hernandez. Look at their left. I would love to have him on our team. I would love to have Theo. Look at the price tag 113 to 139 million. Yeah, they've got a very, very good team. Who's their star player? Not bad. I'm actually going to scout him because he's Italian. He's only 17 years old. Good mentality. He's consistent chemistry we put one footed but it's something we can work on with individual training i want to fully scout him he's playing a two star has a potential to be four i'm always looking for good italian players but like i said we've been doing very very well the formation that i have been kind of playing is kind of been this we have been sort of like going between this this was more at the start of the season and then i just felt with the players that we had playing two met salas i just i kind of wanted to do a wee bit more attacking because we had copa Mainers and deron and they're both really, really good DMs. And I was like, right, what's a formation that we can play with two really, really good DMs? And this one just suits. We have Debast and Scalvina who bring the ball out of the middle, middle, of, the middle of the park. <laughs> who bring the ball out from defense into the middle of the park. 
Hopa Meters and the Ron. They're both very, very fit, good mental stats. And then we'll have Ruggeri and Fresnita. Fresnita, I'm on the fence about. I think because he's still very, very young, it's hard to know how good he's going to develop. And like I said, game to game, like your Fresnita could be absolutely amazing and then mine could be, could be decent. But the fact that he's 19, look, 11 crossing, 11 dribbling. I want someone with a wee bit more vava voom. And a couple of people were mentioning this. That this guy, Charles de, de Kellyere, <laughs> does have a buyer clause and it is very, very cheap. It's only 18.7 million. And I'm, oh, here's the problem we have I would like to keep him and I would like to keep the bass because he is worth a fucking crazy amount of money. So if I get him for 18 million, say we play him for a couple of seasons, we can sell him on for 60, 70, 80 million. And then the same with the bass. But the bass is one that I would like to keep because one, he's only 20 years old. Is five star potential, and like I said, we do have a clause in his contract for the loan fee of 18 and a half million. So, I'm gonna try and maybe in January try and sell a few people on because at the minute we still have 27 million, so we would need like 37 million to basically bring both of them in. So, I need to make up a wee bit of cash from I would say making 10 million shouldn't be too difficult to sell on a like sort of sort of like out of the squad fringe players should be fine. But the Bast has been playing very, very well for a player that's. Look, he's still very, very inexperienced. He's only playing a two-star, 20 years old. Look, he's not even classed as like a current ability. He's a Serie B division and he's doing very, very well. So what's he going to be like when he gets up into like 22, 23 years old and he is good enough to play in the Serie A? I think he's going to be absolutely fantastic. He's 6'3", he can play at both feet. I'm very, very... I'm impressed with how good he is in the ball considering his dribbling's not that great. Him and Scalvini together have been very, very good. So with regard to the team, Carnesi... This is one I definitely want to change because I do like the player from the back or the keeper. I know we set the defense, but I want him to be able to pass the ping the ball about. And Karneshi's um distribution is it's not great. Look, he's a fucking fantastic keeper, but he's just kind of not what we we're looking for, if you know what I mean. So Kar Karneshi may be one look, but he's not worth that much. He's one of those ones that like I would keep in the team because I don't think we're gonna get a ton of money. But he's also fantastic mentality, enjoys the big games, and he's consistent. So I'm like this is one I would like to change down the line. This is not like a necessity right now. But maybe a better keeper with better distribution. Um, I'm thinking of looking at like Heidel. Because everybody knows, look, you can get him like super, super cheap. 14 to 17 million. If we get rid of some people, we could do very, very well. Look, but his distribution is fantastic. And you end up selling them for an absolute shit ton of money all the time. Because big clubs always want him. Because he's consistent. He's got a good mentality. Still only 22 years old. So him down the line, maybe one that we're looking at. Ruggeri, super happy with. But like I said, the only problem is with Ruggeri at the minute. Um, a PSG are interested in him, so um, I don't I, honestly, I don't know where he would go and play a PSG. No, I mean, they have fucking Nuno Mendes. What the fuck do they need? Unless he's gonna be a backup, but he's one I don't want to sell. 21 years old, he's Italian. Look, unless they come in and offer me like 50 million, like 40, 50 million, then I may think about it. But if we were to lose him, then I would maybe look into getting someone like Miguel Gutierrez. One, I think he's a wee bit of a better player. One, he's consistent, enjoys the big games. And he's uh, got a very, very good mentality. He can play reasonably well with both feet. He does have a 30 million buy close. So say we got like 40 million for Ruggeri from PSG. We buy him for 30 million. We get an extra 10 million. Also, he's very, very good. He's only 22. Like I said, that's my plans. But this is all like hypotheticals. I love the like involved views and the things that I'm like thinking about with the team. Because like, this is all hypotheticals. Like Ruggeri can end up staying and we just sell nobody. But like, if we could put that 10 million towards Ban, De Bast, and De Kettler, eh? It could be very, very good. Like I said, Copa Mainers and Duran, I'm very, very happy with. I just wish Duran was a wee bit younger. He's 32 years old. He's one that we're probably going to need to replace, but his fucking mental stats are fucking fantastic. Natural fitness stamina. He is currently upset that I did strip him of the captaincy. Hopefully we can get rid of that. Because I think having Copa Mainers and Duran in the middle of the park, like I said, he's not going anywhere for a while. He's got good natural fitness, good stamina, can play well with both feet. Not an absolutely amazing footballer, but like those mental stats are absolutely the same. The same with Copa Mainers. Look, not a like oh, fucking, you'd look at him and go, he's a phenomenal player. He's very, very good. And he's only 25 years old. First touch is very, very good. Free kick taken. So he's good to have in the team. Long shots is good. Passing's good. Penalty taken. So if we need someone to hit penalties, technique's good. Mental stats are nuts. So to have him in the team is phenomenal. He's also good. A good mentality. Consistent. Enjoys the big games. I don't know why I said he's not that great. Because looking at him at second glance, Copa Mainers, granted, he's only played like eight games because he's been injured. So I haven't really had Copa Mainers for that many games. But looking at him again, 
he's kind of phenomenal. Who wants him? Chelsea. Why did Chelsea? What, what would Chelsea need him for with the midfield they've got? But anyway, happy with that. Ederson doing very, very well. Miran Chuck just got him back. He's played seven games. I played him for like three games at the start of the season and then he was out for like six weeks. So just got him back. He's won, I don't know, 28. He do, he's not really going to progress anywhere, but he's got a good mentality. He's consistent, enjoys the big games and you just know how much I love that. He's one I'm happy to kind of have around, but I would maybe like to replace down the line a little bit. Then De Kettler, like I said, if we can keep him for 18 and a half million, look, I think it's an absolute steal to bring him in. He's young, has everything that we need, and then privacy big Skamaka up top has been doing absolutely phenomenal. Nine games, nine goals, one assist. I actually he was missing for three games there with an injury. So I'm happy we'll have him back today. Look, there's no need for me to ever get rid of Skamaka. 24 years old, he's Italian. Everything that we need can play with both feet. He's no mentality is good, consistency is good, important matches is good. It's just Big physical fucking specimen, 6'5", so he's going to be around for a long, long time. Well, unless Real Madrid come in and fucking try and steal him off us at some point. But the team, I'm very, very happy with. One person I would love to bring in at some point to probably play in, like, the Shadow Striker type role is going to be Nipan. Currently, is no interest in signing for us because he's just joined. I think has he just joined or he's got a new contract. I think he's just got a new contract. Look, he's only 16 years old. Is a wee bit injury prone, but he's one of those ones you can get for really, really cheap. And his potential is fucking insane. Very strong with his left foot, very strong with his right foot, which is very, very rare to find. 13 dribbling, 13 first touch, 13 passing, 13 technique, 13 vision, 16 flair, 14 determination, and he's only 16 years old. So if January comes up and I can scrape up a bit of money, he's probably going to be one of the first ones that I put in for. If we can get him down, because if you don't get him early, somebody big always gets him. He always ends up at either Man City. Most of my, my saves, he's ended up at PSG. And trying to get him away from PSG. But the thing is, if he goes to PSG, we can loan him in and then try and wrangle like a wee optional deal down the line in a couple of seasons. Because that's the thing. He goes to PSG, he never plays, and then doesn't end up amazing. But if you can get him early, he's fucking phenomenal. He probably has like some of the highest potential in the game. Between him, probably the two people that I really, really enjoy playing. I've had Napalm before in a previous save. It was fucking ages ago. Him and Asan Quadrago or two players, I would look, if I can bring Asan in, at some point, look, I know we had him in the previous save, but Asan's my go to league game, playing midfield, as you've seen in the Dortmund save, we played him at right wing back, he's phenomenal, he's one I would love to bring in, and probably play as a right wing back, if we could have, Ruggeri, DeBast, Scalvini, and Asan Quadrago as our back four, I'd be very, very happy with that, and then Copa Mainers and Duran sitting in the front, look, you know I want to play five at the back, but we have two, phenomenal defensive midfielders that have good natural fitness the good stamina the mental stats so i want to take advantage of these two very very good defensive midfielders and just instead of just sell them one on look if if the run if the if a deal ever come up we got decent money but i don't think we're ever going to get decent money because he's only worth like nine to ten million you're not going to get anybody as good as him for nine to ten million unless you get like a really really young player and then develop them or we could get a san and play him in defensive midfield i I'm kind of just brainstorming at the minute. But these two, like I said, I want to take advantage of the two good DMs that we've got. So this is the formation we kind of been playing. Boys, that's enough rambling. Look, we're going to be playing Napoli today. You know how good Napoli are. I don't need to explain it. Look, they've, I'm not going to mention the two players in the team that are fucking phenomenal because if you talk about the, the players before you play, we all know what happens. But my other thought was also, this is going to be it. Look, I, I, I was trying to sign this guy in the Dortmund save and then he ended up going to Barcelona. And we lost out on him. He ends up fucking phenomenal. And he's really, really cheap at the start. Very, very good with both feet. And just ends up amazing. He's one I would love to get in. So my plan is maybe down the line. Look, Skamaka is very, very good as a shadow striker. He's good at picking up the ball. He usually comes deep to get the ball anyway. It's one of his traits. It's things that he's really good at. So playing him as a shadow striker and just letting him kind of roam around and then picking up the ball deep. I may play Skamaka here and then play that kid advanced playmaker because he's quick he's really really good on the ball and advanced forwards kind of tend to drift around to the sides where skamaka is not quick so i want them to drop deep pick up the ball so that's a kind of what i want to do i want to play skamaka as the shadow striker and then play that kid the advanced forward because like i said look already at 18 years old 14 dribbling 15 finishing 13 first touch passing and vision probably something i, I, I wouldn't say we massively need to work on because he's going to be the advanced forward he's going to be the one that's going to be getting a lot of the goals look Determination is good. Flair is good. Mental stats are pretty decent for an 18-year-old. Physically, very, very good. Already got 14 strength. If you're quick and you've got 14 strength and he's very, very good with both feet. Good mentality. He's consistent. So he's one 
definitely want to try and get indoor. This is the problem that we have. If I buy him, I can't get the guy that's on loan from AC Milan. Car I can I can never remember his fucking name. Then DeBast is another one I want to keep. But can we afford both of them? And then Fresnita is good and he's really, really cheap. He's only worth like nine million for our clause. Like we, there's a lot of players that I want to bring in, but it's like where do we get all the money from? And like I said, I always like to try and keep you up to date on things. You seem to enjoy all the back like it's like it's like a little backstory but like i said i like to keep you involved in like what i'm thinking with the team because pretty obviously like a couple of people went oh i didn't think of that player and then you've been recommending players to me look i don't know all the fucking players in fm i really don't there's so many players and there's so many like little hidden gems in fm as well it's it's hard to remember them all like i i'm not gonna lie i thought that was in <laughs> there's so many wee hidden gems like there's players that i've had in saves before and i've found He's an absolute star. And then I run across him because the scout recommends him. And I'm like, holy shit, I forgot all about him. I forgot all about him. It happens to me all the time. I need to start making like a... You know what I need to do? I need to make a short list in game of like all the really, really young under 21 players that are really, really good. And you can save short lists. And then every time you start up and you save, just load that fucking short list in. Because that's the only way I think I'm going to remember. That was a wicked deflection, but I'm saying nothing. I think it's the only way I'm ever going to remember all the players. Like I said, if you have any players that are absolute hidden gems, let me know. Look, I'm open to suggestions. This is a community channel. Look, it's not just, this is my team. Fuck yous. Yous have no say. Look, it's if you can recommend a player that I don't know about in like a certain position and we need a player, like right back... We're going to need a really, really good right wing back. I would love a San Quadrago. My dog's going nuts, by the way. Um, I would love a San Quadrago, but I, I'm trying to like bring in different players and different saves so it keeps things a little interesting. Because you know what it's like. Look, we all have the wonder kids that we buy all the time. We have our favorites. I just don't want to bring them in all the time. You're not going to beat Skamaka in there. Six foot five. You're not going to. There's no way that wasn't a goal. Please put your arms up. It's not a goal. Or, yeah, are we fucking 2 0 up already in 14 minutes? This is going to fall apart. Like, you know how. Are we first in the league right now? Yeah, but like I said, I want to bring. I'm thinking about bringing Vanderson in. Uh, he plays for Monaco. Right back. I'll show you some after this if I remember. <laughs> if I don't, I'll show you him tomorrow in tomorrow's video. I'll probably end up being tomorrow's video because I'm going to forget. But like I said, I'm trying to bring like different players in. And Rico Lewis is one I would love to bring in on loan. Like I said previously, he would be amazing. But just the, the amount of money you have to pay to bring Rico Lewis in on loan because he plays for Man City and they're in the Premiership. It's like it ends up being like fucking like eight or nine, maybe 10 million. Like we don't have. He's off, right? That has to be a straight red. Is Ederson all right? But yeah, like I said, I say this all the time and say if you have any hidden players that you know about that are absolute gems, fucking leave them in the comments. Also, like I said, if you are interacting with the videos and leaving comments and likes, it helps the channel grow as well. Because like, if you want to see me put out more videos, helping me grow the channel is a great way to do that. Because then when the channel grows, YouTube pushes out your videos because you are commenting and liking on the video. So it does help out so much. I thought we knew, I was in the middle of drinking my tea. <laughs> I thought we actually scored that. We were playing very, very well. Look, we're, we're doing well. Two goals up. They've got a man sent off. So things are going pretty fucking well right now. I would like to get another. I'm not going to lie. I would like to get another goal because, no, I mean, I'm not saying anything. I would just like to get another goal. But yeah, also when it hits January as well, the good thing is we're going to have a lot of players that we can approach the sign. Atlanta's got a pretty decent reputation, so we should be able to attract some players on an approach sign. Probably I'm going to go and have a little look. That'll probably be in like one of the next videos i don't want to show you everything in just today's video but like i said i just i like to obviously like show you behind the scenes of like what i'm thinking like if we were to lose this player who would it bring in i think um miguel gutierrez honestly i think just overall he would be a very very good player but that's all like i said if we were to lose um our left back uh rugari one I, I don't know i don't know how good he gets it, it says he, he can get a little it's like ha, i think he can get half a star better and that's about it Half a star is not massive where Miguel Gutierrez is younger, has a wee bit more potential. But the thing is, Ruggeri is Italian and it does help a registration. I don't know what way it works with the Spanish. I think foreign players is like English, Brazilian, Argentinian sort of shit like that. I think Scottish and like all that, like Northern Irish players count as like non-EU players. We are playing amazing right now. Whip us in. See, this is another thing as well. 
because Charles is also like six foot three. So it means our forward line is just really, really big. Because you know, look, sometimes it can be hard to score from fucking like crosses and corners and stuff. Just it, it's just very, very difficult. We will have Skamaka in the box at six five, Charles in the box at like six three. I mean, like we've got a lot of big boys, and I think Mirren is it Mirren Chucks? Is he doesn't a decent height? Yeah, he's six foot as well. I don't think Edison's tall. He's six foot, so we all four of our players that are gonna be in the box are all over six foot, <laughs> which would be phenomenal if we can get them a little bigger. You know what I mean? Like, do we just bring in Lorenzo Luca, six foot seven? That is actually somebody did leave in the comments and say I should get Lorenzo Luca as like our sort of like up top and play Skamaka like in behind. If that could be an option, but I just I don't feel Lorenzo Luca would suit how we play. Previously, I'll show you Lorenzo Luca after this as well. Look. If you played, what was it, like FM22, Lorenzo Luca was an absolute god. He's six foot seven. Because back in FM22, crosses were ridiculous, like our corners. If you put a corner in and just put it on the near post, they would score pretty much every time. So everybody was banned Lorenzo Luca because he was absolutely massive and really, really good heading. And he scored an absolute shit ton of goals. This FM, not just as great because his, his technical skills, like on the ball, we win it 4 0 right now. His technical skills on the ball, they're okay. So the match ended up 4 0. Look, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought that was going to be a lot harder. Was because look, I don't know what it is with Napoli. They just they don't seem phenomenal in FM, even though they have phenomenal players, which is weird. Look, I'm not going to lie. I would love to bring Carrots Vili or Victor Osherman into our team, would be amazing. This is Lorenzo Luca. He's still only 23 years old, Italian. He's very, very cheap. So he could be one that we may bring in as like a backup because he's Italian registration, cheap. But like I said, six foot seven, 18 jumping reach, 17 heading. But his passing's 12 and his vision's 12, which honestly isn't that bad. I would probably work on his first touch, like his first touch and his passing a little bit because like I would like him to be able to pass the ball a little bit better. But he's one honestly down the line. I'm actually going to fully scout him. He's one down the line. Look at the backup, the Skamaka. Could be a really good choice. But this is Vanderson. This is the one that I would like to bring in at right back. One, he's only 22 years old. He's Brazilian though, so this is going to work against our non-EU. Very one-footed. Something we can work on. But he has a good mentality. He's consistent. Enjoys the big games. I need to sneeze. Oh, it's not going to come out now, is it? You bastard. He's got 15 crossing, 14 dribbling, 14 first touch. Passing's good. Technique's good. Mental stats are good. Like I said, he's one I would like to bring in. Only 15 to 22 million, so no, I mean, you're not breaking the bank to bring him in. And he's one that I may be looking at to bring in as a right back. Like I said, once again, all hypotheticals. Because the thing you have to look at as well is, right, Fresnita is on loan, the Bass is on loan, um, Charles is on loan, Evan Ferguson is on loan, Evan Ferguson has been playing, just a mirror and check. Every time I bring him in, he fucking scores. So, like, I can't take him off. And, like, I I'm going to play my players before I bring players that are in on loan. But, like, we have a few players that are in and loan that I would like to keep. Fresnita, I'm not too sure. I don't know what to do with him. I think we may end up just bringing him back on and loan next season if that is an option. The Bast, I do want to bring in. So like there's 18 and a half million that we need for the Bast. Because I think, look, if he if this is him at two star, what's it going to be like a five star? And then Charles, I do want to keep him. So there's another 18.7 million that we need. But all in all, boys, the team is looking very, very good. We're playing well. We're getting games in. Like, we're doing well against big teams. We're not conceding an absolute shit ton of goals. And like I said, I just, I wanted to take advantage of, like, the two good defensive midfielders that we have. And like I said, if you want to know what the formation is for this, I'll leave a link to uh, Hood Gaming and GYR's tactic for this. Like I said, I always go to their channel, love their tactics. They're absolutely fantastic. And he has a huge variety of tactics. So I'll leave the, the link to this tactic in the pinned comment down below if you want to go and check it out. But I think all in all, boys, the team is looking very, very well. The thing that we need to do going forward is try and get a little bit of funds up and try and, one, bring in the Bath, to bring in Charles, and then down the line, I do want to bring in that wee striker from Besiktas because if you don't get him early, see him with Nipan, you just, you pay an absolute for them down the line but boys that's going to be a good spot to stop off for today's video quickly before we leave guys i do stream live over on twitch i also have two other youtube channels so if you want to check any of that our content out everything will be in the description down below but boys that's going to do it for today's video thank you very much for watching remember like comment subscribe only if you fucking want to youtube have yourselves a fantastic day